Okay, so next up we have Sunstone Metals, ASX code STM, an exploration company with two world-class gold and copper assets in Ecuador. Presenting for the company today is Managing Director, Patrick Duffy. Patrick, thank you for your time. Over to you. Thanks, Abby, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, happy to be presenting for Sunstone Metals today. Uh, we've had some big news this week, and it's timely to be presenting. Uh, for those that don't know me, I previously was with a company called Red Five, a WA gold producer, who um, I joined in 2019, $60 million market cap. And when I finished early this year, we were uh, $2.5 billion market cap in five years later. Uh, I've joined Sunstone Metals in April uh, for the simple fact that we have two incredible projects that have just as much, if not significantly more potential as what we had with Red Five and King of the Hills. Uh, and it's a very, very exciting story. Go ahead, two slides. Uh, so we have two projects in Ecuador and South America. This is in the Andean Copper Belt, uh, the same uh, systems that we see with Chile and Ecuador so, and Peru and Colombia um, that host the majority of the, of the world's porphyry systems. And we have two of these. This year we've announced, sorry, this week we've announced at El Palma uh, the scope that uh, for it to be a T1 global deposit. And, um, and there's very few that sit outside the majors um, in the world. It has an, an initial resource of 1.2 million ounces, which is modest, but complemented with a huge exploration target of 15 to 45 million ounces gold equivalent. We, we simply don't have anything of that scale on the ASX. And um, this is quite an incredible story. Uh, there's a huge advantage at El Palma where it sits at surface and goes quite deep, but we are able to start it in the future as an open pit, um, large mine, and it gives us then the cash flow to be able to develop the deeper underground uh, potential at El Palma. We have a second project, Bramaderos, which uh, in its own right is, is a huge scale, potentially the same scale as, say, Degray, which is a $3 billion, 10 million ounce market cap. Uh, in Western Australia, it currently has a 2.7 million ounce resource and uh, and targets uh, both at the porphyries and the comp other complementary systems that take us with to an expectation of over 10 million ounces. And we've been advancing it over the last two years in drilling, which we'll cover off today. Yeah. Uh, we're well funded. We've just raised six and a half million dollars, and we have some major catalysts, including this week's El Palma resource, uh, but Significantly, we are in discussions with various parties about joint venture opportunities to um, be able to help us unlock the, the future value both at El Palma and Bramaderos and, uh, and going through that process. Go to the next slide. Uh, so El Palma is in, uh, very accessible from the capital Quito. We can drive there. It's about 1,500 metres above sea level. As you can see in the photo, it's... Um, it's uh, we're able to access it, it's mostly farmland. There's no protected areas or native forests. There's no indigenous communities. The local community is very supportive of us and, and they're familiar with mining, with um, operations in the area. And we're fully permitted for drilling and, and for access to water and to power. On the next slide, uh, we sit in this, what's called the Tawachi fault system that hosts two T1 systems uh, that are certainly well known around the world. Yurimagua is next door. That's owned by Cadelco, which is a huge billion dollar, billion ton system. And uh, further north is the uh, Cascabel project owned by Solgold, which is a three billion ton system. And our expectations is El Palma with further drilling will will join these uh, T1 T1 world class deposits. It's in an area that's highly sought after. Hancock uh, from Western Australia, Gene Runhart. People would be familiar, familiar with have uh, committed to investing 120 million dollars in drilling programs in the area that's around El Palma and around Urimagua, which just highlights the um, how in demand this area is. Go to the next slide. Uh, this great diagram which shows the full uh, system that we've identified to date. Uh, so the two uh, downward plunging porphyry systems. Uh, with that resource at surface, which is the open pit outline at the top. Uh, the resource we've established to date on only 17,000 metres of drilling is uh, 1.2 million ounces. 
gold and copper. Uh, and uh, in that pit shell, it's, it's certainly open and expected to go much deeper. Uh, for the exploration target that, that's shown in the diagram here, it's 1 billion to 1.2 billion tonne target with grades 0.3 to 0.7 grams gold and 0.1 to 0.3% copper. Uh, if you took the averages of those conceivably uh, sort of 30 million ounces of gold at uh, 0.8 to 0.9 percent, uh, 0 0.8 to 0.9 grams per tonne gold equivalent. And this is only for three of five targets that we have, and there's, there's huge potential for this to grow. On the next slide. Uh, this is the resource. You can see the pit shell on the left, uh, and on the right, it's a, a plan view. Uh, there's lots of areas here that are still to be drilled out and add to the mining inventory. Uh, and we expect it to go much deeper. It'll be a very, very large open pit, very low stripping ratio, so it's sort of one to two times uh, ore versus waste being mined. And uh, since, yeah, lots of expectations that it will, will grow. It's got significant copper and silver byproduct credits. Uh, the work that we've done on desktop level would be very, very low cost mining operation here at El Palma. Next slide is the exploration target. Uh, the thing I'd like to highlight is on the right-hand side, this, this um, diagram which shows the coloured areas that is the target in part of the exploration target, that there's still significant areas to the left in that diagram where you see which we haven't drilled yet, which could could take what already is a monster monster deposit and, um, and at least double or triple the size. Uh, we think as we go deeper, there'll be more copper content. Currently, it's about 75 25% gold copper, but we think, uh, particularly given most of the big porphyry systems in the area are, tend to be copper gold, that there will be uh, more gold, more copper as we go deeper. Uh, next slide is our second project, Bramaderos in the south. I'll touch on, uh, it's in a very good location, quite remote southern Ecuador, uh, only a thousand metres above sea level, and the um, deposits are in this valley, so very easy to access. Uh, you can see the hills uh, in the foreground. They are the porphyry systems that have come up to surface and been eroded away, leaving these copper, gold, copper, silver systems that one day will be very easily mined. Uh, it's got great access to infrastructure with the Pan American Highway running through the concession uh, close to the port. Uh, we're connected to the grid. Uh, we've got water and full drilling access, and it's a um, community that relies on subsistence agriculture. And it's very supportive wanting to see mining drive future prosperity in this area. Uh, the next slide is just a, the concession map on the left, which shows um, the black circles are the porphyries and the Brahma Elba, the two circles you can see with the colours inside them have had drilling and um, make up the resource of 2.7 million ounces. On top of that, we have a further 3.3 to 8.6 million ounce target covering uh, Brahma Elba and Melanal and some of the other smaller porphyries. But again, we think this will grow with further exploration. Uh, we also have complementary um, epithermal systems that are high, tend to be higher grade. Uh, and we have been drilling in the top right in a system called Le Mans, which, which uh, has the opportunity to provide a uh, higher grade feed as part of a very, very large uh, porphyry development here at Brahma Deros. On the next slide, uh, you can see drilling that's focused on this Lemon epithermal system, uh, shaping up as very nice open pit opportunity. Uh, some of the drilling has been exceptional. There's, you might be able to see hole 26 on the right down the bottom, 185 meters, almost three grams per ton is, is a phenomenal hit. Nice wide open systems and uh, lots of exploration upside here. And we think potentially there's a target of 1 to 1 1.7 million ounces to complement the uh, porphyry. If we stay as a standalone company, we can see this being Le Mans being developed first as a sort of 100 to 150,000 per annum gold silver mine, giving us then the funding to develop the bigger porphyry systems. Uh, but the alternatively, if we were to partner with a major, it could be developed simultaneously with the high grade feed coming from Le Mans being fed into the the bigger uh, porphyry processing facility. On the next slide, 
Uh, just to highlight, obviously, I'm sure most investors would be aware, current gold price at record levels, both US dollar, Aussie dollar, and all on the back of, unfortunately, consistent sort of volat global volatility and, um, and uncertainty and the recent uh, pivot in US interest rates has, has started to see gold really, really take off quite realistically, getting to $3,000 by Christmas time. And copper is the second major commodity that we have in, in addition to silver, but a, a great time to be, have two projects with significant copper content when there's a general consensus. I think right now that the fundamentals around copper are, are extremely strong for the many decades ahead where copper supply will really have difficulty to keep up with copper demand uh, for the product. Uh, the last slide is just the overview. I mentioned we've raised six and a half million dollars. Uh, our market cap is roughly 35 to 40 million uh, on an EV to, or, or to uh, mineral resource. We're around seven to eight dollars per ounce, which is absurdly cheap. Uh, it should be at least, in my mind, forty to sixty dollars per ounce when you compare it to our um, some similar projects, but with without the upside that we have with a tier one deposit El Palma and a similar very large scale potential at, at Bramanderos. Uh, we've delivered the target this week. We're up twenty five percent since then, and I think we'll only continue to grow. Uh, and I think if we can secure at least one partnership for one of the assets, then again, that will only validate and um, and drive the share price for a significant re-rate. There was a, a research report released today by GBA Capital, had a target price of um, 2.6 cents. We're currently 0.77 cents and a midterm valuation of um, 9 cents. So classic 10 bagger opportunity. Um, backed up by two two incredible projects. That's all for me, Abby. Back to you. Thank you, Patrick. So I do have a few questions here as well. If you do have the time to answer those, yeah. um, so could you talk more about the support from local communities for the El Palma project? Uh, yeah. So we've we've had no difficulties at all with El Palma. It's been very straightforward. Um, one thing the company has done prior to me starting, which I, I um, have been really pleased to see, is there was a lot of consultation done at the beginning when the project was picked up in 2021, consultations with the communities about what their uh, imminent sort of needs were and, and designed in, in collaboration health and education programs that are relatively low cost but that have a real impact in their lives. Uh, and and I mentioned earlier, there's there are smaller scale mining operations that are, have been operating for decades in this area, and the communities are quite familiar with mining. Uh, so yeah, very very fortunate to come in and have strong support from both um, El Palma and Bramaderos communities. And then is there any information you can share about conversations with partners for your projects and what opportunities for collaboration are you looking at? Uh, yeah, obviously for confidential reasons, I can't say too much, but our ideal outcome would be a joint venture arrangement with a farm in with a, a sort of major mining house or potentially North, North Asia investors um, that are seeking these sort of tier one deposits. And they would earn into the into the JV through the expenditure that would fund the exploration that Sunstone would continue to undertake. Uh, but yeah, we're still still working through those discussions, and and confident we'll get some great outcomes. Thanks, Patrick. So, are uh, the resources for El Palma and Bramadora, Bramaderos Jork twenty twelve? Yep. Yeah. Uh, are they? Is that the question? Pardon. Are they chalk twenty? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So, um, so Brahma Deros has a two point seven million ounce resource that was prepared independently by CSA Global, was so a mining, uh, sorry, global mining house, uh, consultancy house, and the most recent resource for El Palma was prepared independently by Rob Spears, which is a very well regarded independent um, resource analyst. And then what are the projected timelines for the El Palma and Bramaderos projects? How long would it be until final investment decisions? Uh, yeah, I think with 
both with sustained exploration programs. Uh, still, still a lot of drilling to establish what will be major sort of global mine, multi-decade mining uh, operations. I would expect at least sort of three to five years of drilling at both before before we get to uh, an economic resource that you can build a four hundred thousand ounce per annum uh, gold copper mine at both projects. And what's your funding strategy going forward? How well funded are you now, and how will you finance future exploration? Yeah, so so we've just raised six and a half million dollars. We've um, paused exploration activity whilst we are having these um, conversations with potential partners. Um, in an ideal world, we 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 are now funded uh, on the back of a joint venture that will fund the exploration programs and pay us a, a management fee for running those exploration programs. So that remains to be seen, but that's one of the objectives of, of having these dis uh, joint venture discussions. And there's two questions here about country and regulatory risk in Ecuador. Could you offer any thoughts on that area? Yeah, so um, in terms of regulatory regime, it's quite similar to, to Chile. I see a lot of similarities and, and having worked overseas for 10 years, um, no major surprises. Uh, tax regime is very similar to Chile. Uh, from a just general country risk, there's two world-class mines in Ecuador. One's Fruta del Norte, owned by Lundin Gold, which is now a $10 billion company uh, on the back of the success, this tier one asset, amazing gold deposit. And not far away from Fruta del Norte is um, uh, the Mirador copper mine owned by uh, a Chinese company, but it's a 30 billion tonne per annum processing, 30 million tonne per annum processing facility, but a world-class copper mine. There's a number of projects that are shovel ready. There is an election at the beginning of next year, uh, which we believe the current president, who's very much pro-mining, pro-business, uh, will be re-elected. And, and that's a really important milestone where we think the next four or five years, Ecuador will really, really take off. Thanks, Patrick. And given that mining stocks can be sensitive to fluctuations in commodity prices, do you have any strategies to handle the price volatility? Um, so, no, as an exploration company, no. Um, so having come from Red Fire, a gold producer in WA, we had um, hedging in place to help manage the gold price, which with a rise in gold price is a disadvantage. But as an explorer, we it's not natural you would have any hedging. But uh, very confident gold gold will continue to get stronger and stronger um, and copper as I mentioned and we covered both commodities is is in a very strong position to um, start to grow so uh, much rather been gold and copper though, than lithium or, or some of the other commodities that are struggling at the moment and um, yeah uh, to T1 potential projects copper gold it's a, it's a great mix understood thank you um, so what are the next steps for El Palma and could you provide more details about milestones over the next six to 12 months? Yeah, so uh, as I said, we, we are pausing activity to, um, to see where these uh, joint venture discussions go, um, running a number of different sort of strategic streams, but uh, potentially the um, ongoing go forward uh, exploration program may be funded by someone else in partnership with us, uh, but if we don't get a satisfactory agreement, then we will um, quite happily continue. And um, again, it's not very uh, common for a junior miner to have a T1 deposit with a 15 to 45 million ounce per annum, sorry, 40, 15 to 45 million ounce expiration target. That's, that's an amazing asset to have uh, as I said, the share price is already performing strongly since we've put it out to the market. I think the market's been very surprised and we'll, can, we'll keep drilling it if we think that's the right strategy going forward. Great. Thank you, pa um, Patrick. Thanks for your presentation. We'd love to get you on again in the new year. Um, it was a great talking to you today and I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks very much, Abby. Thanks, everyone.